Listen, we've got places to be. You probably have a job or school, and I need to make mediocre content. So let's get straight to the point. Today's topic is going to be about artifice armor, and more specifically, the easiest, and in my opinion, the best artifice armor form in the game. Now, some of you might disagree and say Grasp of Avarice. We'll get to that later. First, why should you farm artifice armor? I'm sure lots of people will say, just slaughter the helm and open some seasonal engrams and get some high stat armor. And technically speaking, you're right, you could do that. It's very stupid that you can even do that, but you can. But artifice armor has something vendor armor does not, and that's extra stat points. For every piece of artifice armor that you have, it'll come in with a built-in socket for you to get a plus three boost on any stat that you'd like for a total of plus 15, or plus 12 if you choose to wear an exotic. Now that might not seem like a ton, but when playing in the end game, those stat points can make a make or break difference between you having a double 100 build or maybe even a triple 100 build. Here's an example of my own. Here is my Void Contrarist Warlock build. As you can see, I have my stats cranked to 100 in Resilience, Recub, and Discipline, and I'm using Artifice Armor on all of it minus the Contrarist. Now, this on its own might not seem that impressive out the gate, but wait till you realize that I'm actually using Fragments that don't really benefit me in those stats. So I have Expulsion, which is Intellect, doesn't matter. Remnants doesn't give me any boost. Then I have Instability for Strength, useless. And then finally, echo of undermining to get my weak grenades at a negative 20 discipline so out the gate i'm at negative 20 discipline which means i need to build up 120 for this to get it into the triple 100 category and that's where artifice armor comes in because i have three discipline here three recover there three recover there three discipline there and the stats add up to what you see here this build is actually statistically insane and i can't believe i even have this thanks to artifice armor now the great thing about this strat is that it doesn't require any fancy setups, no hot swapping, no loadout swapping, you don't have to do your taxes during the damage phase, you know, the usual stuff. All that's required is for you to bring a Well Warlock, a Tether Hunter, and then a third character with a damage super, preferably Gathering Storm with Star Eaters or a Thunder Crash with Falling Star, which allows you to take advantage of both Arc Surge and Monochromatic Maestro for both your abilities and your weapon damage. For those unaware, Monochromatic gives you a 10% bonus damage buff for 5 seconds when using an ability or a weapon to buff the other. So for example, you can shoot an Arc Fusion Rifle to buff your super damage, and once you fire your super, that'll be giving you bonus damage to your heavy weapon. Speaking of which, your heavy weapon will be the star of the show. I have narrowed it down to what I believe to be the best three choices for this particular farm, and here is why. Number one is going to be Grand Overture. The reason why this is number one is not only for its nasty damage output, but also for its ease of use, plentiful ammo, and anybody can obtain it through the exotic kiosk in the tower, and all you need is just an exotic cipher and two ascendant shards. By the way, in case you're thinking, but Sneak, it's so clunky and hard to charge, well, not really for this, because guess what? At the beginning, you could just shoot Keitel while she's just immune in the distance and build your 20 shots, rally your flag, and then you're good to go. Now, how good is Grand Overture? Well, with this setup, you can actually two bell Keitel. Yes, even on Master at negative 20 power, you can still two bell her with this Grand Overture setup. And even if you don't kill her in two bells, you can comfortably kill her on the third bell and secure yourself an easy one phase for loot in about three minutes. Here's a clip of that. All right, and now. Oh, we cook. Rift bow. Uh, Rift's on the back left. Emergency, go. Ah, yeah, no two bell, oh, huh? Number two is going to be Legend of Acrius. Now, don't get it twisted. Legend of Acrius is not number two because it's a worse option than Grand Overture. It can actually easily keep up with Grand Overture in damage and just as easily slap Keitel around. The only reason why I have it slotted at number two is because it's not easily accessible as Grand Overture is, since if you don't own it, you need a Cypher, two shards, and 240 spoils to acquire it. And after that, you need to get the Catalyst, which is RNG. However, if you already own the weapon and the catalyst, you can absolutely pick this instead and nuke Keitel. Here's a clip of Acrius in action, which also two bells Keitel, and at worst gives you a comfortable three bell one phase once again. And yep. I was so delayed. Light over. Yeah.
Yeah, Acrius sucks, dude. Acrius what a terrible so gun. Bad. Finally, number three is going to be Storm Chaser. Now, I will say up front that Storm Chaser is just flat out not better than the other two options for a few reasons. First, it's a weapon that you actually have to aim, unlike Overture and Acrius, which don't require crit aiming. And to add to that, Kyle does her stupid little head fake all the time, which can screw you over in potential damage. Additionally, Storm Chaser is also the hardest of the three to get, as you need to farm it in the dungeon and farm for a good roll on top of that, which is completely RNG. That being said, if you do own a good Storm Chaser, it is still very capable of landing a one phase on Keitel and still provide that three minute farm for your Artifice armor. Here's a clip of that. Oh. Okay. Uh, rifting on the left. Bro, she tilted me. Or she tilted her head, I mean. Yeah. Oh, she gave me an exotic! Let's go! <clears throat> Sneak from the future here. If you're enjoying the video, please consider subscribing today and maybe leaving a like and or comment. It does help the channel. It is much appreciated and it helps build the channel up to that YouTube algorithm. Back to the video. So with all that mentioned, you utilize this easy setup with any of these weapons and you get yourself some comfortable one phase Kaido kills in runs that'll take you about three minutes. But you might be asking, what about leading into the damage phase? What is the best method to staying alive? I've got that covered for you as well. First on your chest piece, you should be rocking Solar Resist, Sniper Resist, and Concussive Dampener. Just about every damn thing in here will be shooting you with Solar, including the Snipers and Keitel, will be splashing you down with non-stop Solar. You might be thinking, well, what about the Champs? I say, just ignore them. Literally. No, I'm not kidding. Literally, just ignore them. Just stay to finishing for the symbols on the Scions, and then heading back to the middle of the map. You don't even need to bring Anti-Barrier, just leave them alone, and they'll barely touch you. Additionally... I would recommend bring a Waveframe GL for the main room of this, just to blast through the waves of enemies. Forbearance, of course, is going to be insane here as it's Arc and it, it's also Forbearance. Now, I will say, for when you're ready to go into the damage phase, you should switch this out to something else like a Fusion Rifle or a Shotgun to make quick work of the Bellhops to make your transition into damaging Keitel seamless. And finally, for the last closing thoughts, why is this better than Grass of Avarice Artifice Farming? Well, in duality, you can have Keitel step on you, repeatedly. Okay, no, but seriously, it all comes down to just timing and consistency. In my eyes, most fire teams will not one-phase Averick on Master due to the boss's health pool, and then factoring in him moving around, sometimes he'll even teleport, and it just means you're far less likely to one-phase. Then, that means you're taking up 5 plus minutes a run, and that in itself is just far less optimal compared to Keitel, who will literally just stand there for you and allow you to rail her right in her tusks, in-game, in-game. Anyways, that's what I have for you guys today. Hopefully this helps and you guys can take advantage of this because this farm won't be back for another six weeks and who knows what the meta will look like then. If you'd like to support the channel, consider subscribing today and maybe hitting that like button and leaving a comment. It does help the channel, is much appreciated and helps with that YouTube algorithm. And if you don't know what to comment, you can simply leave a comment of Artifice Farm. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.